What's up guys, my name is Brandon and today Apple released iOS 15.4 beta 4 to registered developers exactly one week after the third beta. And for public beta testers, you guys should be seeing this update very soon. Now in addition to this iOS release, we also got iPadOS 15.4 beta 4, tvOS 15.4 beta 4, HomePod OS 15.4 beta 4, watchOS 8.5 beta 4, and macOS Monterey 12.3 beta 4. But of course, in this video, we're talking all about iOS and iPad OS and what's new in the software, along with when to expect the next beta, which might be the RC build. We'll talk about that later. And of course, eventually the final release of 15.4. But first, let's start off with the size of this update. And you can see here on my iPhone 13 Pro Max, it came in at just under 700 megabytes coming from beta 3. That size, of course, will vary depending on your device and the version that you're coming from. Now, if we go into our settings, and then go to general about 15.4 we can see the new build number here is 19e 5235a so we do have an a at the end of the build number which does indicate we are very close to a final release usually the rc the build before the rc is the a build so with that in mind that means that we could see the rc next week but again we'll talk more about that later on and if we go down to the modem firmware you can see that has also been updated it's now 1.59.03 it was 1.59.00 before this all right so now what's new here in this fourth beta and first off i have to say that i got the prompt to download the software update over cellular so i don't even have a sim card in this phone but i still got the prompt to use cellular data to download this update so we talked previously how this might be like a bug or may just not last but this is two betas in a row now we've seen this so it looks like this could be a feature coming in ios 15.4 that is the ability to use cellular data to download software updates. Before, you were only able to do this over 5G, only using 5G enabled phones. So this is nice if you wanted to download software updates over cellular, but you did not have 5G. We also get a brand new Siri voice in this update. So if we go to our settings and go to Siri and search, and then to Siri voice, you can see that we have a new voice down here, voice five, and you can take a listen to what it sounds like. Hi, I'm Siri choose the voice you'd like me to use. So that is a brand new voice here for Siri. So hopefully we get even more voices over time, but we have a nice selection now of voices to use for the American style of Siri voice. Also new in this update, we get a new prompt when setting up an AirTag for the first time. So this of course is in response to all of the headlines about people using these AirTags to stock people. But you could see now we have a new prompt here and you kind of have to agree to some terms here. So it says AirTag is linked to your Apple ID. AirTag is intended solely to track items that belong to you. Using AirTag to track people without their consent is a crime in many regions around the world. AirTag is designed to be detected by victims and enable law enforcement to request identifying information about the owner. So that is a new agreement that you have to agree to before you set up and link the AirTag with your Apple ID. And this is really smart for Apple to add in the AirTag setup because if somebody did use these to stalk somebody, they put them in somewhere, they agreed to this right here. So in court, you know, nothing's going to hold up because they agreed to a contract. This prompt right here is essentially a contract. They agreed to it and then breached the contract. So that's going to be something else that's going to be good for Apple in court if somebody does actually use an AirTag to stalk somebody. So it's nice to see that they have this added now for setting up AirTags. We also have a minor change inside of the music application. So now when you go into the menu, when you're on the now playing screen, you can see that the view full lyrics glyph icon has slightly changed from 15.3.1. So you can see 15.3.1 here on the left, right next to view full lyrics, you can see that the glyph icon has been changed. And speaking of the music application, we also got references in the code to a new sorting option being added by release date, but we still don't see anything added here in beta four. I'm not sure if it's gonna be for the playlist or inside of a playlist, if you could sort it by release date, but we don't have either right now. There's nothing new here in these menus to sort by release dates, 
but that is referenced in the code, so it should be coming soon, maybe in the RC or the final release. I've also had a lot of people ask me about the tap to pay feature, which of course is the feature coming to the iPhone very soon, where you'll be able to make payments via just tapping on another iPhone. You won't need like a square reader or any external hardware. You'll just be able to pay by simply tapping on another iPhone. So there's still nothing new here that we can visually see in 15.4 beta 4. We are still waiting on third party providers to add support. So that's probably when we'll see it on our phones. Stripe has already said they're going to be the first ones to launch this feature. It's actually in beta right now through Stripe. So you'll be able to tap to pay for a lot of different things that use Stripe. But right now, we don't see anything new here in beta four. Now, of course, once we get to a fourth beta, Apple's main focus starts to shift to bug fixes. And we have quite a few bug fixes in this update. So first off in our settings, if we go to our iCloud settings and then to iCloud and then to iCloud mail, we can finally click on custom email domain and it actually loads up. So before in previous betas, it would just hang there and it would stop loading and we would never see the splash screen. We we would never be able to set up our custom email domain. But now in beta four, we can actually open up this menu and actually create our custom email domain. Also in settings, if we go down to general background app refresh, and then all the way to the bottom, you will notice that the web icon or the web toggle there is missing. So before in previous builds, we talked about how the web toggle right here for background app refresh was bugged out because it didn't show an icon. Now it's just been completely removed from this section inside of settings. We also have a fix for reminders. So if you synced your reminders via iCloud and you notice that they were not syncing properly over the past couple of betas, I believe it worked in beta one, but it did not in beta two and three, but that has been addressed and does work properly now in beta four. And if we look at the release notes for beta four, we could see there's only one resolved issue with this update. And that's the same as beta three. We only saw one resolved issue. There's still a lot of known issues, which is pretty interesting, but we can see here the resolved issue has to do with FaceTime and inadvertently taking a photo of a participant when in a group FaceTime call. So you can see here it happened by tapping on the grid button or the bottom left corner of the screen. And this is also a bug on macOS that has been resolved with this update. And then as far as bugs go, another bug that should be fixed by now is the storage bug. So I talked to you guys about this previously in my last video, my follow up video on Saturday. And a lot of people said that the storage issue has finally been fixed where they can actually load up their storage right here. They may have to wait a little bit, but it does eventually load up and they can see the amount of storage taken up on their device. So if it hasn't been fixed for you, I would assume that beta four fixes it for those remaining that did not have it fixed in beta three. Now, with that being said, I am still having issues with AirPlay to HomePod. It's still not working every time. I get some weird error sometime saying that I couldn't connect or the connection timed out. I'm still getting that even though I know I have no issues with my connection. And then if we go back and reference the release notes, you can see there are still quite a few remaining issues relating to the health app. The home application has quite a few known issues, iTunes, messages, phone. So we have issues with emergency SOS. We have issues with some messages not opening or not being able to scroll after viewing a photo in quick look and also an issue with settings. So you can read all those in the release notes if you want to. A lot of them are not really too widespread. I don't see too many people talking about them, but they are still known issues that Apple is working on. Now, as far as the performance goes, performance feels great so far. I mean, really nothing to complain about yet. Of course, I haven't used it long enough, but I've tested out quite a few things that I had issues with in the past and everything seems to be running just fine so far. I cannot imagine it's gonna be much different from beta three despite having an A build because things were already pretty good and running pretty well. I will discuss my overall experience after spending more time with iOS 15.4 beta four in my follow-up video on Saturday. I'm also gonna start putting my SIM card in these phones that I'm running the betas on from now on just to discuss cell connectivity performance as well. I know if some people requested that, so I do want to go ahead and do that for you guys as well. And of course, like always, I did run a Geekbench test right after installing the update. And you can see I scored a 1746 on the single core and a 4821 on the multi core. Compare that to 1735 and 4914, which was beta three, which was a couple of days after it released. So pretty good scores 
Definitely in the single core, pretty good scores right there, right off the bat. I will run more this weekend as well. And then as far as the battery life goes, battery life, you know, beta three was my first good experience with battery life so far in all of iOS 15.4, the beta stages. So I'm hoping that it continues here with this fourth beta. Of course, I don't know yet, it's too early to tell. I will discuss that in my follow-up video as well on Saturday, so stay tuned for a battery update. All right, so now what's next for Apple? So next up is iOS 15.4, either beta five or RC. So that is coming next week, most likely on March 1st, which is next Tuesday. It could be on the Wednesday as well, but it's gonna be most likely one of these two days. So we're either gonna see a beta five or an RC. Now, if it's a beta five, say we get beta five on March 1st, that means that the next week, March 8th, which is when we're expecting to see an Apple event, we might see the RC build released after the event and then the final released maybe in the next couple of days, maybe the 9th or the 10th. Now, if we see the RC next week on March 1st or March 2nd, somewhere in there, then that means that we're gonna see the final release most likely on March 8th after the Apple event. So again, there's a lot of speculation right now. We don't know for sure that the Apple event is happening on the 8th, but everything is kind of lining up right now for that to be the case. Next week, we should be seeing event invites go out from Apple. If there is in fact an update on the 8th or a event on the 8th, we should see those event invites go out sometime early next week, most likely on March 1st, given that it's gonna be exactly a week from the event. But of course, things can change and that's why it's always good to keep updated with me over on Twitter. And of course, in my follow-up videos that I post here on the channel every weekend, you can get more updates and more you know, up to the date release date schedules and my predictions. So make sure you are following me on Twitter. And of course, make sure you do tune in to those follow-ups on Saturday if you're not already. But anyways, guys, there you have it. That is iOS 15.4 beta four. Even though we're on a fourth beta, we still got multiple new changes in this update, multiple new features, which is crazy. This update is just absolutely massive. Definitely the biggest update of iOS 15. But if you guys enjoyed this video, as always, I would appreciate if you give it a thumbs up. And of course, make sure to subscribe for a lot more iOS 15 coverage. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching, and I'll see you soon.